Hi everybody, Casey Zander here, and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to pass any woman's test that you are dating. Now, fair warning, you being able to spot these exact categories that I have right behind me on this whiteboard in the exact moment will only come through two things. The first is actually battle testing these things on real life dates. The second thing is being able to master your own intuition and be able at a split second to know when they're coming in. Okay, these tests, you are going to experience all of them in your life. I don't care how high value you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care what you do for a living. I don't care how good your verbals are. Every single man on earth, on earth is going to get tested from time to time. And because of that, I would prefer to equip you with the correct knowledge to pass these tests and ensure that you can attract the quality of companions and have the relationships that you've always wanted. So with that said, let's dive in. Now, before we begin real quick, we have exactly 85 seats left inside of the masculinity blueprint accelerator. I've been telling you for the past three weeks that we are closing enrollment when we hit 2000 for quarter two. And I highly recommend checking out those pages below so you can be part of that expert mentorship and community. But nevertheless, let's dive in how to know in the first place if you're getting tested. This is one thing I see time and time again, where guys don't even know that a test is coming. They don't even notice the psychological frame controls that are coming. So with that said, I'm going to tell you exactly how to know. Typically what will happen if you are being tested in the heat of the moment or in a date, you're going to get an internal tingle. Okay. This is called your intuition. You have to listen to your intuition. It's going to probably like create tension, it's going to ball your stomach up in a knot just for a little second. You might feel a quick pulse right through your, your, your blood pressure might raise. You might feel your pulse accelerate a little bit. And here's how you'll know. Okay. The test when it comes right through the text message or out of the mouth verbally, you look at that sentence or you hear that sentence and you say to yourself, this would be weird to say if it was a friend. Like if I was sitting here having a cup of coffee or a beer at the bar with my friend Joe, if Joe said this to me, this would be super weird. Okay. That's how you typically know it's an off putting comment or it's a comment where it makes you sit for a second and actually think it gives you that internal tingle, that internal pulse through your body where your blood pressure might raise a little bit, your heart rate speeds up. And it's because it's making you think you're now playing the game. You're sitting in the fire. So think of it this way. The reason why it's called game G A M E is you got to think for a second, if it's if it's a uh, season playoffs, and it's going into overtime, okay, your heart rate is going to be accelerated, you're nervous, that's normal, this tension is normal. So here's what at, at a deeper level with this, what could really happen with any of these arguments or with any of these verbals or any of these tests that you run into, okay, when you hear them, and you feel that tension in your body, the, all of these sentences could result in an argument if you were to let it. So think about that for a second. You spot the test because you feel the tension, you know, it's an off putting comment. And you sit for a quick second and you think, man, if I reacted to this, this could actually get heated. That is not what you want to do. But in order to know if you're getting tested, if this is a quick emotional response that you're feeling in the heat of the moment, that's normal. Now from there, you are playing the game and it all depends how you lay your cards. So with that said, over here, I have four specific tests that you are going to run into time and time again. These are my categories and these are my specific ways that I frame them. The very first is going to be indirectly answering questions, aka not giving you straight answers. B is going to be rescheduling dates. The third type of test you're going to notice is overall being rude. And then the fourth and last is going to be competency or frame tests. So let's dive into the first category, indirectly answering your questions or not giving you straight answers. What do you do? How do you solve these? Well, there's two categories. Okay. The first type of category you want to look at is if you're in the attract phase, or if the woman that you're seeing is in the retain phase. Okay, it is your job to be able to use your seduction, use your sex appeal, use your verbals, use your high value traits that you have to attract the companion that you desire. It is 115 to 120% the woman's job to retain that man if she likes him. So this is the game that guys have to play in the beginning. This is the game that girls have to play in the long run if they want to earn their seat to become a girlfriend, a companion, a significant other. So with that said, you have to if you're running into this test, the woman indirectly answering your questions and not giving you straight answers, 
you have to decipher which phase you're in. If you guys have been intimate, you've consistently seen each other, right? She likes you, you're probably in the retain phase. If this is your very first date, right? Or if this is your first handful of dates, you're still in the attract phase, completely normal. So let's start with the attract phase. If you're in this phase and you're not receiving straight answers, okay? Like you're not getting direct yes or no's to the things that you're asking. What you're going to do is you're going to exaggerate on her claims, AKA laugh about it, push, pull and tease. You're going to flip the questions back on her and you're going to create basic tension through teasing, push pulls and nags. So what this would actually look like verbally is if uh, like, like, let's say you ask a, you ask a woman out on a date. And she says something along the lines of like, maybe I'll be free or I get off work at six. So maybe I'll be, I'll be available. If you're getting things like maybe a good exaggeration would be, Oh yeah, you must be such a busy girl. Okay. That's just a quick brief exaggeration. Or you can say, I remember the last time I was 13 and I couldn't make up my own schedule either. Quick little winky face. Okay. Basic teasing, basic pulling, basic tension. These things show, that not only are you not moved off center, you're not like demanding a straight answer right away, but you can also play the game and banter back and forth. However, if you were in the bottom half, the retain phase, meaning this woman already likes you, but now you're starting to get tested deeper into the relationship. This is where you're going to have to express frame control, right? You can demonstrate something like, you know, that's not going to fly or you can even just leave her on red if it's going to be a text message. So the, the real key with the retain process and the frame control, like what that would look like is like, if you're going to continue to see me, I'm going to expect straight answers out of you. Like I need to actually know, like if, if you can't, if you can't do me the decency of answering something, then I have no reason to date you or I have no reason to see you. That's how it would look when you control the frame. So the key with this to in the retain phase, if that's the phase the woman is in, the key is that you have to have the ability to walk away. The second you lose the ability to walk away in anything in life, it can be a negotiation. It can be, you know, a, a relationship, whatever the case is, you will be at the lower value and you're going to be at the lower hand in the interaction. The second type of test that you will run into is going to be rescheduling dates. Okay. When you get date reschedules, here's what you have to do. Once again, we're going to split this into two specific categories. So this category right here is going to be the setup up top. This is going to be what happens if the setup was still done perfectly and it still happens in the long run. So when it comes to the setup, okay, the way to avoid date reschedules in the first place is you have to actually set up the interaction. So there is some sort of investment on her end. So what that looks like is that looks like phone calls or FaceTimes or voice memos. So that way she feels some sort of emotional response. So she actually likes you. You see, if a woman reschedules a date, you have to understand that oftentimes it wasn't because she needed to, it's because she wanted to reschedule. How do you make somebody not want to reschedule? You have to make them actually want to see you. So what would that look like? Well, you got to ask yourself the deeper level investment. Like let's say she made plans to go out on a date with her mom for lunch. Okay. And her and her mom are going to grab lunch. You have to ask yourself, would she just flake last minute and reschedule? The answer is no. And the reason is because there's investment between her and that other person. The way that you actually accelerate the investment is you FaceTime, you make it as close to one to one interaction as possible. So it's really, really hard for people to say no to people's face. It's really, really easy to hide behind the phone and say no on a text message. Because of that, you have to use that to your advantage. You have to be the one who, you know, initiates the voice messages, initiates the conversations on the call, initiates the FaceTimes. You have to be the one to actually build that rapport and build that connection. Now, second half of this, what do you do if you still get tested in the long run and there's a reschedule? You have to set the tone and say things like your time is valuable. You have to potentially withdraw the invitation and ultimately you can even go and just get a new girl and demonstrate high value and still go on the date with somebody else. And that is the power of being able to generate options for yourself. These things over here, being able to retract the invitation, stating that your time is valuable and saying, you're not going to put up with that or saying that, you know, I had this plan for two days. It's Saturday because of that. I made time for you. I'm no longer going to make time for you in the future. Those things show that you are able to walk away. And it also shows that you have some sort of self-worth. 
This in the long run is going to raise a woman's attraction. Where what will oftentimes happen is she might go back on her word and say, yeah, we can still squeeze it in. Or, you know, I feel really bad. I want to see you tomorrow. Things of that nature. This test is easily avoided though if you do the setup correctly in the beginning by raising the investment and the buy-in temperature. Next, third test. This one stings. Being rude. You'll notice from time to time you might be with a woman, especially a woman that you've maybe seen for two to three weeks in a row. Okay, the consistency is there. If you start to get tested where there is just overall rude behavior, there's a few things you have to do. The first thing you have to do is you have to learn how to just say no. No, that behavior is not going to fly. No, you can't act like that. No, I'm not going to put up with this. How do you actually demonstrate that when you say no, it holds weight? Well, you do it by removing your attention and flat out ignoring the person. You have to understand that the overall thing that that woman desires is your care and your attention. If a woman has your care and your attention, she's winning. The second that that care and attention is readily available is the second that the value of that care and attention holds no weight and it is now desired by somebody else. I didn't make them that way. That's just how the dating game works. So in order to get rid of this, you have to be able to say no and call out the bad behavior. And if you want to even tease with this, you can even call it kindergarten behavior. You can start to push, pull and tease. So that way you set the expectation. You say what is allowed versus what isn't allowed. And because of that, if this, if the test of being rude still persists, you have the ability to 100% walk away. The last type of test that you will experience all the time is going to be the competency and or frames test. Okay. This is where they try to make you do things. You might send a text message and the, and the girl types back and says, why do you always have to be so judgmental? Right? And maybe you reply something along the lines of like, I will act how I want period. That is how you control the frame. What most guys would do if a woman would say, why do you have to be so judgmental is they backpedal. They try to claim that they're not, or they try to prove her wrong by arguing. Instead, you have to hold firm and you can even blatantly ignore it and virtually say that you will act how you prefer, not the other way around. Another thing that you can do is you can disregard and reset the tone. So disregarding would mean ignoring it. Resetting the tone is basically saying you're going to, you're going to act how you want. You're going to be who you want to be, and you're going to consistently say the things that you want. And you don't express this verbally. You do this through action. And the quicker you get at being able to do this through action, the more you won't even start to really get tested in the first place. And you just seem like an overall really rock solid and congruent guy. Not only that, the way to do this through flirting is you can say things like Papa makes the rules or hush. Okay. Those things demonstrate higher value. And ultimately, like if you want to register high on a woman's hypergamy, if you say hush, it's frame control. It's basically saying Shh, quiet. That's frame control. If you say things like Papa makes the rules, it's funny, it's flirty. And it also sets the tone for that woman's entering your frame. The key is to stay lighthearted. If you get hit with competency and frame test, it's just because the woman wants to know that you are her best option. And because of that, if you demonstrate that you will win every single time. With that said, I genuinely hope that this video helped you for all one to one coaching for my men's full stack MBT mentorship. I recommend going down below booking a call with my brother Cole. Cole will interview Cole will interview you. Excuse me. We do have exactly five seats available this month and this month only. With that said, you can go down below, book a call. You can see if you're a fit and if you are, we will extend the invitation on that phone call to potentially work one-to-one -one with me. Hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.